Blessings. Hello, hello, hello. I hope everyone is well tonight. Hi, Rohan. How are you, baby? <laughs> That's my youngest son saying hi. So again, let me just welcome everyone to Womb Wednesdays. I'm Ramona Riley, AKA the Vagina Lady and owner of Cosmic Woman. Wednesdays, Womb Wednesdays, uh, is a show that I do every single Wednesday or most Wednesdays, unless I have a birth or some type of emergency, but every single Wednesday, and we talk about certain reproductive issues or, um, what can I say, periods, uh, pregnancy, uh, anything reproductive, sex, mm. all of that. We talk everything reproductive. So tonight will be no different. We are going to be talking breastfeeding, breastfeeding, and breastfeeding. So please, everyone, uh, before we get started, I would like to do a quick prayer, and then we're going to get right into it. Of course, as you guys know, if you have any questions whatsoever, just shoot them down here so that I can answer them towards the end uh, so that everybody can get a full understanding. And of course, if your questions do not have anything to do with breastfeeding, that is quite fine. I have no issue with that. I want to answer all questions. So please, everybody, just bow your heads, do what you would usually do for prayer, and I will lead the prayer. Dear God, we just come to you humbly, thankfully, for all the things you have created to allow us to be healthy, to allow us to maintain our wellness from the plants and the stones and the minerals that you have created. As you know, at the end of the day, for the most part, natural healing and holistic healing can help a woman from the inside out when it comes to hormones or anything else. We ask you to just bring peace to our hearts and to our minds. Amen. Okay. So anybody who is just coming on, welcome to Womb Wednesdays. So this week is breastfeeding week. And this is a topic that we really need to talk about. Because I find a lot of times that we don't talk enough about this. And breastfeeding is extremely important. It is the first food that your infant really should be getting. Of course, depending on the situation, sometimes that is not the case. But for the most part, this is what we want to do. We want to make sure that baby is getting all that goodness and niceness from the mom. Right? So let's first get into my personal story with breastfeeding. <laughs> So I got pregnant when I was 24 um, and I was a new mom. Um, I was a young mom and I thought I was doing everything right. Mm -hmm. I thought that if I read enough books <laughs> about pregnancy, um, I would have been okay. And breastfeeding would have been so easy. I read the books. I had a full understanding. I didn't even think that breastfeeding would have been an issue because at the end of the day, it was never explained to me that it could be possible that either my breast milk might not come in or it might be that I do not have the tools and the understanding to help the breast milk come in or even how baby is latching. When I went into labor, uh, I went into labor the day actually before my due date. No, actually I went into labor on my due date and I was induced. And when I was induced, I was induced with Pitocin and it was not the type of birthing experience that I wanted. Every time they put me on, birth con on, on Pitocin, I found that, and the doctors, the midwife found that my baby's heart rate would drop. They would take me off, they would wait two hours, they would put me back on the Pitocin and that baby's heart rate would drop again. And so it really delayed my labor. 
Of course, during this time, I was not thinking anything about breastfeeding and that not being a reality for me and also for my baby. Once baby was born, I did try to breastfeed. He latched, he went on, and he actually did suck some, and he got some milk. What happened with Royce is that he had really, really bad jaundice. And jaundice is something that many babies get, and it's not really an issue. But my pediatrician definitely was not a fan of the high bilirubin level that I had. And that is how they test the jaundice. I had to leave my baby in the hospital for three days under this bilirubin light. And so between the time that he was born and up until the time I left the hospital and he was still there, and then when I took him from the hospital and brought him home, he was really not getting any breast milk. He was getting formula, 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 and some more formula. And of course, as I said again, I did not even realize that this was something that would haunt me later on down with breastfeeding. When I got home, I put him on, he latched, but he did not want my nipple. He did not want it. As soon as he would latch, he would pull away. And it really made me feel like I was not a successful mom. It made me feel bad. It made me feel depressed. And not a depression that, you know, made me not want to hold my baby. It wasn't anything like postpartum depression. But I was sad. I was sad that my baby did not want to latch. I found that because of that, of course, I had to get a breast pump. And I pumped the milk. And I would put it in the bottle and give it to him. But by the time I realized that pumping... In a pumping, putting that milk in a bottle and giving it to him, by the time I realized that, my breasts were engorged with milk. And I found that I was literally soaking my breasts in very, very, very warm water and combing out my breasts and squeezing out my breasts. I felt literally like a cow. My cousin Stephanie was laughing at me and was like, Mona, you're turning into a cow. And I literally felt that way, trying to express the milk because... It was so painful as, in, as, the, as my breast became more engorged, it became much more painful. And of course, during this process, I still had to give him formula. As time went on, I did get a breast pump. And so I would pump some and I would put it in a bottle. And that was great that he could get some of that. But at the end of the day, the majority of what he was getting was formula. As time went on, I found out that he was suffering from horrible constipation. He would go a whole week, a whole week and a half and not poop. So he was miserable. He was distressed. He was uncomfortable because, of course, his whole entire digestive system was backed up. This made it hard for me. This made it hard for him. And at the end of the day, why is it that my baby, who is newly here, who should be happy, who should be comfortable, is uncomfortable. So when I had and got pregnant with my second son, with my second son I knew that I had to do something different. I knew that I needed to breastfeed this baby. And so as soon as he was born, I breastfed him. I kept him on the breast. Even when he did not want to eat, my breasts were sore. They were bleeding a little bit. It was painful. But the pain was not going to stop me from making sure that he does not have nipple confusion. And nipple confusion is having the breast milk, the breast nipple, the, the breast nipple and the bottle nipple having some sort of confusion for the baby because of course it's shaped differently when you suck milk comes out differently and so with Rohan I knew that I had to do something different kept him on kept him on kept him on during the whole time at the hospital my baby went to the nurse not one time did not go into the um into the nursery at all. The only time Rohan went into the nursery was when they went to take him to get his circumcision. When it was over, they brought him straight back to me. Rohan breastfed for 11 and a half months, and it was fantastic.
I did not give him formula till way, way, way later when I was trying to change this whole breast and all of this breast and only wanting breast and needing my nipple and needing my breast at all times because by the time I got to 11 and a half months I kind of wanted my boobs back you know I kind of wanted it back because when it comes to sex when it comes to breastfeeding you know it kind of threw me off a little because for me my breasts are huge when it comes to me sexually in terms of my turn on and so it was just time to remove him from the breast. And that's when I introduced formula to him. With Reagan, who is my daughter, of course, her experience was completely different because we didn't even go to the hospital for her birth. And so she also breastfed very long. She breastfed up until a year and she never, ever got formula. And that was something I was really happy about. I was really proud of myself for after coming from a situation of not really being able to breastfeed my first child to now being able to only breastfeed my third child. I do not want women to sit down and get depressed and frustrated and bring on most more postpartum issues because breastfeeding is not happening. And that is why we are having this live tonight. We're talking about breastfeeding so that no, there is no other woman that needs to suffer the way I did, the way my son did. Okay. So I want you guys to understand when it is that you find out that you're pregnant, there are things that you need to do. In this prenatal phase, there are things that you want to do to make sure that your breast milk comes in, to make sure your milk ducts are not hardened, but they can become open, okay? So that the breast milk in itself can come, expel, and of course, baby's belly can be full. So please, I need you guys to look into, when you're pregnant, lactation, a lactation specialist. This is someone who has gotten a certification to understand how it is they can help, not just with the latch latching, but how to prepare the breast for breastfeeding. One of the main things I tell my clients when they're pregnant is massage your breasts. Massage them. Use warm oil. Massage your breasts using while, while you're in the shower, okay? You're taking a very warm shower. Just massage the breasts, rub on them, love on them. Because, of course, this softens the, the milk ducts that is going to help you to breastfeed. I really also suggest tasting your milk once the milk comes in. You want to make sure that you know what it tastes like. You're giving this to your baby, you want to know what you're giving your baby. You want to know what your baby is tasting, okay? It is not gross. It is not nasty. This is a part of you. This is actually the best thing for your baby. So why would it not be okay for you to taste it? Taste your breast milk. Know what that tastes like. All right, ladies, please. I even made my husband taste it because... Our baby needs to, we need to know what we're giving our baby before we get it. Just like if you're going to give your baby some food and you blow it and you put it on your mouth and you do any of that, it is the same exact thing. Same exact thing. So when we're preparing, preparing for this baby, preparing for this breastfeeding of the baby, I really suggest making sure that you get what we call either breast pads, which are usually made out of cotton that you can put in your, um, your breastfeeding bra, or you get a piece of cloth. Now, as a new mom with my oldest son, who is turning 14 tomorrow, um, I got breast pads and I spent crazy money on breast pads because you're changing them all the time. A lot of times you have this letdown, even when it's not time to breastfeed baby. And the letdown is literally the sensation you get from on the top of your breast coming all the way down to the nipple. So you put this, so I would put this breast pad inside and it would actually catch the milk that is expelling while it is that I'm not breastfeeding. As I suggest, as time went on, 
I did not use breast pads anymore. I didn't use that with my, sec my second son and I definitely did not use that with Raygun. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money on breast pads, okay? Take that same burpee cloth and put it in your breasts. I used to take the, breast, the burpee cloth, put one side in one breast, one side in the other, okay? So you don't have to spend a lot of money on the breast pads. I also suggest a breast pump. You have a many different types of breast pumps. You have the manual one that you have to actually squeeze, and you also have the one that, um, that actually is electric. So you would plug it in, it comes on the breast, and it pumps on its own. I really suggest getting one that is electric. It allows your hands to be free so you can do more. When I was breastfeeding, I could vacuum, I can drive my car, I can do whatever I need to do with my hands because my hands are free. So getting a breast pump is something really important. It makes your life so much easier. And again, as I said, an electric breast pump, a double pump is always best. Now, for some, they can't afford a double breast pump that's electric because we're talking about $300 and $400 and $500 US just for the pump, okay? And then sometimes you have to get the accessories as well for the pump, okay? So please make sure that whatever it is, wherever financially you are, you work that. So if it's the manual pump that you have to do, you will just pump it yourself with your arm. If you can afford the electric pump, you will do that as well, okay? Breast pump is everything. It is literally everything. Hydrating is also important. Hydrating is also important, okay? So make sure that you are drinking water, drinking water, and drinking water. You can drink water, you can drink coconut water, anything that hydrates the body. Of course, water is usually the best thing. Coconut water, though, is extremely good as well. So, excuse me, you can alternate either one, okay? Or both, I should say. You can alternate both. Apart from that, the hydrating... When we are breastfeeding, a lot of times, because baby is close to you and hearing mom's heartbeat, smelling mom, sucking, sometimes baby can fall asleep, okay? And I have a lot of moms sometimes that text me and they say, I'm trying to breastfeed a baby, but every single time after two minutes or one minute of baby sucking, baby falls asleep. What I recommend for that is take off baby sock. Baby is just way too comfortable, way too comfortable. So take off baby's sock or take off baby's shirt, leave baby just in the diaper so that baby can stay up. Sometimes what you can do is just go like this and kind of tickle the foot bottom every time baby seems like he or she's falling asleep so that they can get the milk that they need to and fill their bellies for that time, okay? You might not think about it now if you've never breastfed your baby, but trust me, it is the most comfortable place for a baby to be. So breastfeeding while baby is uncomfortable, and when I say uncomfortable, I don't mean miserable, but the warmer they are, the easier it is that they're going to sleep unless they're completely hot. Then that is a completely different situation, which we don't want baby to be hot. Then we start thinking about SIDS, which is sudden in death sudden infant death syndrome, and all other types of things that can affect your baby. So remove clothes from baby, leave him or her in the diaper, tickle the foot bottom, rub on the cheeks, do whatever you need to do. Go like this and open up the, and open up the mouth so that the baby can stay awake. Now, for some women, their breast milk literally just is not coming in. And when it's not coming in, what I do recommend, and this is something that you want to think about before you have baby, is doing something with your placenta, okay? And when I say doing something with your placenta, I mean either one, placenta encapsulation, or doing a placenta tincture. 
The placenta is this organ that comes into your uterus when you become pregnant and after you have delivered your baby in whichever way, may it be vaginally or C-section, then after the placenta is removed from the actual body. Okay, we take this placenta, we look at it, we make sure it's healthy, and then we take it and we can either one, do the um, placenta encapsulation, which would basically be taking the placenta, cleaning it off, cutting it up, and putting it in a dehydrator. Now, someone that's going to do this has to be certified. I hate when women go online, look up how to do the placenta encapsulation, and think that they should do this on their own. They should not be doing this on their own. They are not well informed enough to do this. They are not educated. They have not gotten any certification to do this. Another way is the tincture. And the placenta tincture is basically taking a piece of the raw uh, placenta, putting it in a dark bottle or jar, and then filling up the rest of the jar with brandy. Okay? You leave it out in the sun for 24 hours to 48 hours, and then mom can take a tablespoon or more, just depending on what her situation is, and taking it twice a day, every day. With the placenta encapsulation, depending on where mom is, you know, in her postpartum recovery, she would take either one capsule a day, two capsules a day, or three capsules a day. It really just depends. And of course, the person that is doing your placenta encapsulation will let you know what it is that you are to do. Okay? What you need to do, how you need to take it. Some people might say your placenta, eat your placenta, drink your placenta, that's gross. Why would you do that? Are you an animal? But guys, we are animals. And to be honest with you, many other cultures do this as a ritual. Many other cultures think that this is one of the most beautiful parts of the postpartum phase. So it is really just this whole new Western world <laughs> that seems like they have this issue. But it is completely healthy, it's completely okay, and I really do recommend this. So if this is something that you want to do just to prepare, just in case, because you never know what your situation is, once you have given birth, you would want to go find a placenta specialist, have a meeting with them, let them know your, your issues or your fears, and then they can guide you along the way, okay? Apart from that, um, we also want to get into postpartum vitamins. I ask my clients sometimes, or just random women, um, are you on vitamins now that you're in this postpartum phase? And they'll say, oh yes, I'm on prenatal vitamins. But I think to myself, prenatal vitamins? But you're not even in the prenatal stage anymore. You are now in the postnatal stage. And when you're in a postnatal stage, you need many different things in your body now at that time that you will not that you would not need during the prenatal phase and then of course during the prenatal phase there are things that you would not need in your body or can't have in your body when it comes to the postnatal phase so please if you are now going into this postnatal phase we want to make sure we're on what postnatal vitamins and over counter vitamins, you know I don't love that. You know I think that a lot of them have things in them that are not healthy, okay? Not healthy at all. So try to make sure that they're plant-based, okay? Try to make sure that um, they do not have any negative entities in them. Now, there are certain things that you can do to promote more breast milk, okay? Um, and I really want to go over some of those really quickly uh, before, we can get, before we get into the questions because I want to really focus on some questions, okay? One of those things that we can use is a oil blend that Cosmic Woman has called More Milk. don't know if you guys can see it because of the light. Probably not. Sorry about that. Yeah, you guys probably can't see it. 
but this is called more milk. What you would do is you would rub it on your breasts every two hours. When it is time for you to breastfeed your baby, you would take a cloth, you would wash off the breasts so that baby is not getting any of this oil on the mouth, in the mouth, or any other place on the face. Now, this does not need to go on the nipple. This is just for the mass part of your breasts. This is a topical treatment. You do not swallow this. I recommend the more milk in this form. If it is that you, if, if, if financially you are strapped, okay? Now, let's say, for example, you are not strapped financially or you are making the necessary things that you need to so that you can purchase the things that you need to. I suggest fennel. This can be the fennel herb or this can be the fennel oil. The reason why I will recommend the fennel oil is because, number one, it is much more potent. And number two, it's easy. You can take a drop in your water and drink it. You can fill an empty capsule with the fennel oil, putting one drop or two, closing it and swallowing it. This increases your breast milk. And I mean almost immediately, okay? In less than three hours, your breast milk should be coming in more, okay? Now, when you are not breastfeeding your baby, you also can be pumping. So you can breastfeed baby now, and then in 35 minutes or in an hour, you can pump. The more you stimulate your breasts, is the more milk that will be produced. I'll say that again. The more you stimulate your breasts, is the more that breast milk will be produced. So make sure you're stimulating that. You're stimulating it from pumping, you're stimulating it from baby sucking, okay? Storing your milk is also important. Because at the end of the day, mommy's probably not going to be home every day, all day, able to give baby breast milk. So once we pump, we store, okay? The only time you shouldn't necessarily store that milk is if you are giving the baby a bottle for dad to feed the baby. Now, this is really important, but we have to be delicate with it because we do not want baby to get nipple confusion, so I suggest making daddy do this a little later on. So maybe by week two, week three, week four, a month later, you allow daddy to put the breast milk in the bottle and then breastfeed baby because this is a really great bonding time, okay? For baby to connect with daddy, look in daddy's eyes, be skin to skin. And guys, when you're breastfeeding, it's really great for you to be topless, okay? Because of course, again, that is more skin to skin. And this is really important for the development of your baby, for the comfort of your baby, okay? So when you store your milk, you're going to get these special bags that are for storing breast milk. You're not going to put this in a Ziploc bag and throw it in your freezer, okay? You're going to get breast milk bags. You're going to make sure you write the date on these bags because you always want to use the oldest milk, the oldest date, okay? So if you breastfed two days ago and you stored that milk and you're breastfeeding and you are, and you are storing the milk now that you're pumping, you wouldn't use the pumped milk today. You would use the pumped milk from two days ago or two weeks ago, okay? really important sometimes we find that we start to pump or we start to have a lot more breast milk than we can pump which is not a bad thing because then of course we have more milk for baby but it can cause a lot of pain Okay, a lot of pain. So I want you guys to make sure you're using warm compresses on your breasts, that you're putting warm water on your breasts, that you're massaging your breasts, okay? If you have to get a comb and comb out your breasts, 
I really suggest that. It will make life easier for you, less uncomfortable as well. It is always great to breastfeed your baby up until a year if you can. But if that is not a reality for you, at least three months, okay? Remember, there's a lot of goodness in the breast milk. Not just the breast milk itself, but let's say, for example, all of the vaccines that you might have had, okay? The, the, mom, the, the measles, mumps, and rubella or the hepatitis B, or any of those others, okay? The breast milk is protecting baby. It's one of the reasons why I did not vaccinate Reagan, because she was already protected whilst having breast milk from me, right? Now, I had so much breast milk with Reagan that actually what I did was I donated some of that milk. You have some moms that cannot breastfeed for whatever reason. They might be on some sort of medication that they can't breastfeed, which is so sad, okay? Or the milk did not come in. And so for some women, they would prefer to give their baby someone else's breast milk than to give them formula because they're thinking about their gut and they're thinking about their immune system, and they're thinking about all these other aspects. Because remember, the formula has a tendency to constipate baby. And when baby is constipated, mom and dad are getting even less sleep than they would be getting in general. And you need your sleep, okay? Now, let's say, for example, um, you are into teas. There are herbs other than the fennel that you can use to make a tea and drink it. Fenugreek is another herb that you can use. Great for milk production. Okay, so you just boil your water, put your herb in it, let it seep, strain it, drink it. You can also make an iced tea out of this. So it does not have to be hot. It does not have to be hot. It can be cold, it can be room temperature, or it can be that normal hot tea, okay? Really, really important that we get that in the body to help with the milk production. So if it's fennel, if it's fenugreek, whatever it is that you're using, may it be a tea, may it be an oil, we wanna make sure that we have that on hand. You take that to the hospital. You have that in your hospital bag, the same way how you have the baby clothes and the baby sock, and your pads and the diapers and all of that. It is an essential part of your hospital bag or your birth center bag or if you're birthing at home, okay? Now, I wanna know if anybody has any questions about anything that I've spoken about so far when it comes to breastfeeding. I know that breastfeeding does not, um, everybody, can't really um, connect or won't necessarily have a care at this point when it comes to breastfeeding because they're not breastfeeding or they're not pregnant or they've already breastfed and they're not having any more children. But this is information that you can pass on to your loved ones, the ones that are pregnant, okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm gonna go through some questions right now. Um, this is a question I always want to ask. What's the safest? Can I... I can take if I don't want to get pregnant. If you don't want to get pregnant, the best thing is to just not have sex while you're ovulating, okay? That is literally the best and the easiest thing to do. You make sure you know when you're ovulating, you don't have sex maybe two days before ovulation and through the ovulation process. You can also use condoms. No, different strokes for different folks. For me, condoms is not an option, okay? I'm married, I have my husband. I mean, half the nice, half of the great benefit <laughs> of, being preg of being married is that you don't have to use condoms anymore. So for me, that wasn't an option for me, but it might be an option for you. Also, there is birth control. Now for me, as you guys know, birth control is not usually something that I'm going to recommend because I think that it does a lot more harm than it does good. But I'm not going to judge. Everybody has their own journey. And if that is something that you want to do, then please do so. Hi, Rohan. <laughs> 
what is happening if I have pain when I pee and pain after my urine smells fishy? Okay, if you have pain when you are peeing, what that means is you might have a UTI, okay? You might have a UTI when you have pain during the peeing and also after the peeing. Now, a UTI is something that we can treat in many different ways. If you go to an OBGYN or a regular medical doctor, they're going to give you antibiotics. If you come to me, I'm going to leave you, give you lemongrass oil and tell you to swallow it and tell you to rub it on your abdomen and on your back. And you can even use a heating pad or a hot water bottle on your abdomen after you have rubbed the lemongrass on it. This really helps with the UTIs. I also suggest steaming. Don't wait until the pain is ridiculous to start to do something about it. Your pee is not supposed to be painful. Just like how your periods are not supposed to be painful. Just like when you poop or have bowel movements, it should not be painful. So as soon as you start feeling a little funny tingle, and not the good tingle, but an uncomfortable tingle, you then want to make sure that you are doing something about that, okay? The smell, the pain, the tingling, the discomfort, it is not what's supposed to be. Can you use the red raspberry and breastfeed? Yes, you can, okay? That's why I love red raspberry so much. You can use it... When you're 11 and have your period, you can use it while you're, while you're pregnant and you can use it after pregnancy and you can use it up until menopause, okay? After menopause, there's, no, there's not really a reason to have to use it. You can continue to because you still have a uterus and so you want to make sure that the uterus muscle or, I mean, the uterus is a muscle. The uterus itself is toned, okay? The more toned a muscle is, is what? Is the better, is the healthier that the muscle will be. Sorry, guys, I'm just scrolling down. Okay, so somebody's asking about the placenta and what does that do if you consume it? So the placenta is an organ, okay? And this is an amazing organ because it feeds the baby, it gives the baby oxygen, it just does so much, okay? So the placenta in itself helps with postpartum depression, the placenta, in terms of when you eat it, okay, or if you drink the tincture, it helps with postpartum depression. It also helps with promoting more breast milk. And that's the reason why I brought it up tonight, okay? It helps the milk to be produced more. So that is why I really suggest it as well. Now, what is great about breastfeeding is that it helps to shrink back down the uterus, okay? Because remember, the uterus is big and it's swollen because it's had this baby inside of it for 10 months and this baby is humongous by the time you've gotten to 10 months, okay? So as baby sucks, the uterus comes down to its natural size, which is fantastic, okay? Yes, I'll say again, you can definitely use red raspberry while you're breastfeeding. I suggest it 100%. Hi, Stephanie. How are you, my darling? Is it hard to get pregnant after an ectopic pregnancy? I had it and haven't been able to get pregnant since. Okay, so it really depends on what happened with that ectopic pregnancy. You have some women that have an ectopic pregnancy and they do not lose that tube that the pregnancy was in. You have some women that they do lose the tube and so now they're only working with one tube. You can get pregnant from one tube, but of course it's a little bit harder because it's one tube versus two tubes, okay? 
Um, now, I also want you to look into the fact that if you have an ectopic pregnancy, sometimes it can be because there could be some blockage in the tube. So that could also create an issue in getting pregnant again. So if you've had an ectopic pregnancy, no matter if you lost the tube or if you did not lose the tube, I really suggest making sure that you um, do things for tube health, okay? And one of those things uh, that you can do is using seropeptase, okay? Seropeptase is a supplement that comes in a capsule form that can really help to flush the tube if the tube has any blockage or if there is any scar tissue near the tube. Can I deliver babies? <laughs> well, I can in terms of physically I can and I have many, many times. Um, even at the hospital when the nurse and, um, and the doctor have not reached into the room and baby is crowning and coming out even when someone runs to go call the nurse or the doctor i am the one left in there i know more than the mom the dad the grandma the whoever and so i do deliver that baby but if we're talking about hey i'm pregnant now and i love what cosmic woman does and i think ramona is amazing and i want her to be a part of my birth i do not deliver babies in that way Okay, I assist with them, but I do not deliver them. So you would still need a midwife if I were if I was there, or you would still need an OBGYN. I have received the food list, and I'm wondering if there are Jamaican food suggestions. Of course, there are. The food list has many. Um, what should I say? Many vegetables, many fruits, um, grains, a lot of different things. So, for example, let's say you want to have callaloo. Callaloo is great. You can eat that if we're talking Jamaican foods, okay? Um, you can use the majority of the vegetables um, and definitely all the fruits that are here in Jamaica. Just make sure that there are not, if they're supposed to have seeds, that they have seeds. So, all of this seedless grape things that every almost every store I go into supermarket I go into or whatever they everything is seedless grapes seedless grapes seedless grapes are GMO seedless grapes no one should be eating no one your child yourself I don't care how old you are or how young you are it is a GMO food which means that it is not a real fruit so those are the things that you would want to stay away from. But in general, Jamaican fruits, all of them, knock yourself out. Vegetables, knock yourself out. Hi, I need to speak with you. I have so many issues and need a sit down with you as soon as possible. Well, I would love to help you, goddess. So just send us a message, send us a DM, send us a WhatsApp message, and we can schedule something for you so we can start the healing process. What is the red raspberry? Red raspberry is a herb, and it is a herb that is very gentle, okay? But then so powerful, even though it's gentle. It's like insane. Um, God is just so amazing. Uh, you use it as a tea, you make it as a drink, like an iced tea, um, and you have that every single day. Uh, now, if you suffer from hormonal issues, red raspberry is not going to help you hormonally but it will help you in terms of your periods. If you have painful periods, if you have long periods, okay? Really, really good for you. Yes, I will definitely respond to you. It's like my BV or what is going down there can never go away. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Your vagina has moods. Sometimes she's happy, sometimes she's sad, sometimes she's pissed, okay? And so you have to be aware of what or how she's feeling. If she's always having some kind of ailment, may it be BV, may it be UTI, may it be any of those types of things, you need to address it. She's not happy. She's not happy with you. 
okay? And on top of that, your mate could be reinfecting you with BV. So I suggest you do something about that. BV is going to start in the gut. And so you want to make sure you're getting your gut right. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you are detoxing. You want to make sure that you are making sure the pH balance in your vagina is healthy. Right. You are using antibiotics to heal something. And the antibiotics is only making it worse and killing down and breaking down your liver. So antibiotics is probably not the way to go. If you are interested in something for that, send us a DM, okay? So we can give you some things to rid yourself from this BV. I had BV from I was 18 up until about 28, like constantly. Like I was BV, like BV was me all day, every day. And I hated it. I was leaky, leaky. I felt like I was smelling some kind of funny way. Um, it was just, oh, it was horrible. No woman should have to deal with that. No woman should have to feel like, I don't know if I really love my vagina. So we need to do something about that. I started the womb tea and I must say it's, it's so good. I'm preparing my body for pregnancy again. Recently had a miscarriage. Is there any other tea you want to recommend? Well, I think that the womb tea is enough for you in terms of tea, unless it is that you have a condition, okay? So let's say, for example, you have blocked tubes, or let's say, for example, you have fibroids or cysts or PCOS or any kind of reproductive condition. Then we might want to add another herb or other herbs to the womb tea so that you're getting um, some more healing. So let's talk a little bit about this block tube because I realize a few people have been talking about block tubes, right? Block tubes can be blocked in many different ways, okay? Sometimes the tube is blocked just because of inflammation. So it's not necessarily that something is in it that is blocking it, but it is because it is swollen and it is inflamed and it is hard for the liquid or the dye or the of the eggs or whatever it is to go through it okay another thing that could be blocking the tube is mucus yes mucus mucus can definitely be in the tubes which is allowing the tube to not do what it needs to do plaque is also something that can be in the tubes so if you want to get your tubes unblocked it is possible do i suggest surgery no. And the reason why is because there's too much scar tissue left. And if your block tubes are because of scar tissue, that is going to be even harder to remove than the plaque or the mucus or the inflammation of the tube. Yes, I am a doula. I am a postpartum doula and also I am a birth doula as well. There are many things that you can do for your tubes. I have an IG live that we talk about the tubes, so you can go and check that out, okay? There are different herbs, there are different supplements, um, there are different uh, treatments that you can do to help with the tubes to make them as healthy as possible. The only way that we can know if the tubes are blocked is if we do an HSG test. An HSG test is usually done either at your OBGYN's office or they send you to a clinic or to a certain place to get this procedure done, okay? The procedure is basically taking some dye, putting it through and watch, use, you, <laughs> using some dye, and seeing how the dye flows through the tube. If it does not spill over, then they will tell you that there is some blockage, okay? If it spills over, then you're fine. So if you're trying to get pregnant and you haven't gotten pregnant and you're doing everything and nothing is working, I really suggest you doing an HSG test. If it is that you 
want to get pregnant and you have not necessarily been trying but you want to get pregnant, I also suggest doing an HSG test. The sooner you know what is going on with your tubes, the better off you will be. You won't be wasting time, okay? In terms of prenatal vitamins, um, I definitely do recommend you being on prenatal vitamins while you're pregnant. Uh, of course, plant-based, food-based is always the best way to go because it is not stressing out your liver. Okay, I'm not, sorry. Yes, because it's not stressing out your liver. Okay, And of course, your body will absorb it better because it is food or plant-based versus a chemical. When it comes to folic acid or folate acid, I really, your prenatal should have um, folic acid um, in it. Okay, it should have it in it. And usually it has enough for you. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to take an additional amount. The WhatsApp number um, to contact us is 876 406, no, 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 yes, 406 2764. Again, 876 406 2764. Yes, the HSG test I hear is painful. I hear it's horrible, which is why if a client has done it before, I don't ever send her back to do it again because it's really, it can be traumatic. And of course, some women deal with pain better than others, but at the end of the day, it is not a relaxing and exciting process. I'm being treated for BV. What treatment do you suggest for my male partner to ensure that he's, I am not being reinfected? I really suggest him cleansing. He needs a cleanse. He needs a cleanse. You need a cleanse. You also need some kind of vaginal insert as well. Okay. And at Cosmic Woman, we use silver. We use either collodial silver or nano silver. And it really, really helps. I have endo. My MD prescribed Clomid to achieve pregnancy. Is that safe? Well, Clomid is a prescription um, pharmaceutical. Um, and is it safe in terms of is it going to kill you? Definitely not going to kill you. Do I recommend Clomid? No, because at the end of the day, number one, a lot of women suffer from the side effects of Clomid. It makes them nauseous. It gives them headaches. It makes them uncomfortable. Um, and I, of course, use more natural methods to um, make sure that you're ovulating, okay? If you're suffering from endo, there are definitely things that you can do in terms of changing your diet, certain treatments that you can do to yourself. Uh, so you can look on our IG Live where we talk about, where I talk about endo and um, how to get pregnant with endo, how to alleviate the symptoms of endo. So you can check there as well. Okay, but Clomid, of course, is not something that I am personally going to recommend. Um, but yes, many doctors recommend it. And as I said, it's not something that is going to kill you. What do you suggest I use to keep the vagina and the entire reproductive system healthy while pregnant? Okay, so definitely your prenatal vitamins. I also suggest red raspberry. Uh, that would be really good for you too. Uh, you can even mix the red raspberry with chamomile. That would be good as well. You can do Irish moss. Uh, Irish moss would be great as well. It has a lot of iron. It has a lot of different minerals that is healthy for you. So I would recommend that too. I don't know if Pregnacare is plant-based. Um, you would have to look at the ingredients. So I can't really say. But you can Google it. Um, I am not in South Carolina. I actually moved to Jamaica. Uh, we still have a, um, we still, South Carolina is still our base. Uh, so that is where all of our orders are left from and we send it out from there. So if you are in the States or if you're in Dubai or if you're in China or any other part of the world other than Jamaica, we send our products from South Carolina to you. 
but I'm physically not in South Carolina at this time. I know you specialize in females. Any male fertility tips or referrals? Okay, definitely. Um, there are things that men can do. So if your sperm count is, if the sperm count is low or if the mobility is low, meaning that the sperm is not moving as fast as possible as it should, uh, there are a few things you can do. You can use black maca. You can use black seed oil. Uh, at Cosmic Woman, we have a male tea that you can also use um, to help. You also want to make sure that you cleanse, okay? So get your significant other a cleanse so he can clean, okay? If his sperm is an issue, it's in his gut. It starts in his gut. So let's get his gut right. Prenatal plant-based vitamins. Okay, so... I am very anal about these types of things, okay? Because sometimes it can say plant-based, but then it has gelatin in it. it has like, it's in like a gelatin capsule instead of it being in a veggie capsule. So it's going to sound horrible, horrible, but <laughs> one of the only plant-based um, prenatals that I recommend is a plant-based um, prenatal that I sell, okay? Um, and that is by... Um, Naturello. Okay, love Naturello. I do not do pap smears. No, I don't. Um, you'd have to go to your midwife or you'd have to go to your OBGYN or a general doctor to do a pap smear. Okay, guys, so guess what? We're literally at 10 o'clock. I can't even believe the time has gone so quickly. Now, I want you guys to send us any messages on DM or to our WhatsApp message so that we can answer any other questions that you have. If you are suffering from fibroids, if you're suffering from PCOS or from a simple cyst or you have BV or you have a yeast infection or your tubes are blocked or you're not having orgasms or you're not getting pregnant or anything reproductive we are here to help cosmic woman's team is here and trained to help you okay and if my team can't help you of course i can help you so please just send us a message it is a safe space i repeat it is a safe space for you to express exactly how you feel what your goal is what you're suffering with guys thank you so much for being a part of this live tonight i know that we spoke about something that is not as exciting it's not as popular but there's no way that it could be breastfeeding week and i not tap on to breastfeeding Tomorrow is my oldest son's birthday. He's going to be 14 tomorrow. He did not get as much breast milk as the rest of my children. And he's, it literally has been harder for him to be huggy, to be touchy, to be as physically as loving as my other two breastfed babies. So please, I have had to go out of my way for him to be the loving soul that he is. Breastfeeding does so much, not just feeding your baby, not just protecting your baby, but also the comfort, okay? Also the nurturing, also the closeness, okay? So please, if you have anybody, if you know anybody that is pregnant, send them this, um, this live. It definitely will be in the IG. Um, TV, send it to them so that they can um, get whatever info that they need, okay? So that they can be successful at breastfeeding. Thanks again, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. We're going to be having questions and answers for the whole hour. So make sure you're ready up your questions so that I can answer all of them. Thanks again for tuning in. I am Ramona Riley, aka The Vagina Lady. Love and light to you guys. Blessings. Bye-bye.